Using Streams Flutter SDK, you can quickly get up and running building a chat application similar to Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. In this tutorial, we will explore some out-of-the-box components that you can easily add to your Flutter application to get started. Before we begin, it is important to note that Flutter Stream Chat has several different packages that you can use in your application, depending on the amount of control and customization that you'd like to have. The easiest to use is the Stream Chat Flutter package, which contains pre-built UI elements. This is the package that we will be using in this tutorial. If you need more control over the UI, StreamChat Flutter Core provides the bare bones implementation with logic and builders. And for full control, the StreamChat package allows access to the low level client. Please see the stream documentation for additional resources and information. Please also note that there is a companion blog post to this video that provides additional examples. With that out of the way, and we have an understanding of the different packages, let's actually get to the fun part and build a chat app. The first thing we need to do is add the stream chat flutter package in our pubsec file. In main.dart, we'll start with a my app widget that displays a hello world message. We'll import stream chat flutter and make our main function asynchronous. To keep this tutorial simple, we'll create an instance of the stream chat client in the main function. To initialize the client, we need to provide our stream API key. This API key is retrieved from the stream project dashboard and will be unique to each project. This stream chat client we created contains information about our application and connection state. Note that we can also specify a log level for the client, which we'll set to info. Next, we'll need to connect a user. To do that, we call connect user on our client and await the result. This requires a user object, which contains a specific user's ID. The connection also requires a user token for authentication. In this example, we are hard coding a pre-generated token. However, in a production scenario, this should be done using a backend to generate a user token using our server SDK. Please see the documentation for more info. Next, we'll create a channel using the type messaging and we set the ID of the channel to Flutter devs. This specifies the channel or the chat we'd like to observe and participate in. There are a number of default channel types, live stream, messaging, team, gaming, and commerce. You can also create your own using the stream dashboard. The channel ID is optional. If you don't specify an ID, then it will be generated based on the list of members. Finally, we will call watch on our channel. This is used to create and listen to the channel for updates. If the channel already exists, it will simply listen for new events. We will now need to pass down our clients and channel as constructor arguments to my app. In material app for our home property, we'll supply a stream channel widget, which requires the channel and a child. For the child, we'll create a new stateless widget called channel page, which will return an empty scaffold for now. An important thing to understand is that StreamChat uses inherited widgets to pass information between parent and child. As such, the order of the StreamChat widgets in the widget tree is important. Therefore, we need to ensure that StreamChat is always the root widget of our application. We can do this with the builder and material app. In the builder, we will return the StreamChat widget and set the client and child. At the moment, the child is the stream channel that is set in the home argument. Then in our channel page widget, we will set the scaffold's body to be a column and the first child to be a message list view, wrapped with an expanded widget. And now, taking a look at our app, we'll be able to see all of the channel's messages. Below the message list view, we'll put a message input widget. And just like that, we can send messages to the channel. Finally, we can add another UI element in the app bar called channel header to show the channel information. With just these widgets, we have several rich interactions out of the box. URL previews, user mentions, chat commands, and image uploads. Ideally, our chat applications should have more than just a single conversation or channel. Applications like WhatsApp allow you to create groups or have multiple conversations with different people. So let's explore how we can extend our application to have multiple screens that show different channels and different conversations. We'll create a new stateless widget called channel list page and return a scaffold with the body set to be a channels block with a child of channel list view. Then for the channel widget, we will give the channel page and back in my app, instead of having a channel page, we will now give the channel list page. The channel list view shows a list of channels based on a custom query and ordering using the channels block. In our app, we can now see a large list of available channels that have already been made for this project. Channel list view handles pagination and updates automatically out of the box when new channels are created or when a new message is added to a channel. One common customization we can do is set the pagination limit. As an example, if we set the pagination argument to have a limit of five, it will only load five channels at a time. Let's set it to 20 instead. Something else we can do is sort the channels by the last message received. 
We can do that by providing a last message add sort option as the sort argument. At this time, you'll note that if we try to enter some of the channels, we are presented with a red message list. This is because we are not members of those channels. We can filter for channels where we are members by giving a filter argument with the filter set to members, and we give our current user's ID. Note how we are using inherited widgets to access the user object from stream chat. Now we can see all the channels that we are members of, and we can enter and exit them. Stream chat also supports message threads out of the box. So this will allow you to have sub conversations within a channel. To achieve this, we'll create a new stateless widget called thread page. This will require a message parameter that we'll call parent. And in the build, we'll return a scaffold with the app bar as a thread header, which requires the parent. Then in the body, we will do the same we did in the channel page widget. However, now we will give the message list view and message input a parent message argument. Back in our channel page widget, in the message list view, we'll now specify a thread builder argument, which is a function that gets the parent message and returns the thread page we just created. Now, if you tap and hold on a message tile, the option will appear to make a thread reply. Clicking that will take you to a new thread page. So far, you've learned how to use the default widgets in the application. However, the library was designed with composition in mind to easily allow for all forms of customization. This means that you can change any components in the stream chat library. All you have to do is change the default widget with one that you make yourself. As an example, we can pass in our own channel preview builder in the channel list view. This function will get a build context and channel. Using the channel info, we can construct a custom widget or we can create a custom message in the message list view. We can override the message builder and return our own custom widget. And we can update the theme for all of our chat elements. Customization options are endless. Please see the full written blog post for additional examples on customization and theming. We hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Stream Chat Flutter. For more information and to get started building your own feed and chat apps, go visit getstream.io. Okay.